Joe's not here yet, is he? Yeah, we're waiting for Joe. Hi, Steve. Oh, here's Joe. Steven, you made it home. Are you on? Yes, sir. Thank you. I am on. How you doing, Steve? Fine. Thank you. How are you? So far? Great. Great. <laughs> <laughs> Did you all get a copy of the um, agenda? Uh, no. Should be in your email. Unfortunately, I was slow getting it out. It went out about 4 o'clock today. No, it could be there then. Joe, I had posted a general one on the city website. OK, thank you. Tom, are you holding up OK? Yeah, we're hanging in there. All right, we'll wait two more minutes and then get going. And Tom, uh, I got a call, a note from John. He's uh, John Crespo and he's not making it. Okay. And I think uh, Diane should be on. I don't see her. Louise, are you holding up okay? I am doing well. Yeah, Good. thank you. I'm okay. sorry I missed the last meeting. I could somehow I couldn't get on. Well, I, that happens to all of us at one time or another. Yeah, we're learning. It, yes. <laughs> okay, and it's, it, it's Jeff Joe. I'm on the. I'm just on by via the phone line. Okay. And is Eversource, the Department of Transportation, uh, through Shellfish, or the Department of Health? Not I. No. Um, yeah, the, the only no. thing. Do you, mean, do you mean just about the bridge or all issues? Anything. Anything that we've got to deal with with communications. Just the uh, public meeting on the 16th regarding <clears throat> the uh, Manresa work for the walk bridge. Correct. And that. I got an invitation for that, um, and that, I think that came through about three days ago, Steve, if I remember correctly. Yeah, I can't remember, all running together. Yeah, and it's, it's, it's going to be a Zoom meeting, and if anybody wants to get the flyer on it, I can send it to you via email. Just, um, you know, send me a quick note, and I'll, I'll get it out to you. They did not give me any information as to what the meeting is going to be targeting explicitly, but um, it's basically Manresa, and they didn't say whether it was just specifically the channel or the whole facility. Peter, do you have any information on that? Nothing. I just got the same thing that Steve got. And that's it. We don't know, we don't know if they're going to use part of, of the... The, the land for staging or what? So, I mean, the, the inclinations that I've gotten is that it's going to be some staging, barges. Uh, there may be some erection there too, putting the, the pieces of the bridge together. And uh, I, I, my suspicion is is that this meeting coming up is more uh, on a fact finding that how much resistance they're going to have with Bill, Village Creek and. Uh, the other, was it Harbor View, the other association? Yeah. 
So that that is where the resistance is going to come in. That, even though that is a state highway, way, and even though they did at one time, not for many years, have a lot of traffic going in and out of there, bringing fly ash out and uh, other stuff as well. But it's it's going to be the traffic from the neighbors and and, the and, and probably giving them a, a heads up at how much of that's going to be and to see how much they're going to resist it. Are you guys aware of the barges that were assembled right across from the Maritime Center? Well, now, just about a couple of weeks ago, they brought them in in sections and put them together apparently at night and the barges went out. I imagine they're going to get the steel. Well, they can't do that because there's, they have no permits to build anything. So um, I don't know what they would do with that. But the, 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 Man, the Manresa project, Joe, is, is, is interesting. The, the, this is Jeff again. The, the, the Harbor Commission suggested five years ago that they take a look at Manresa Island as a way to, to stage the barges and some of the, some of the fabrication uh, parts of, of the project. So the, the, the way that their plan has been submitted to DEEP for permits now calls for, for them to build a, a fabrication platform on South Water Street. Uh, several properties down from from the bridge. Now, if if they are able to switch to Manresa Island, then that property down several properties down from the bridge would would be used for a different purpose, in, perhaps including the relocation of the of the two passenger boats. But if they if we also talked about being able to stage barges out there rather than moor them in the outer harbor where they could rest on the on the bottom and, and potentially damage shellfish beds. Yeah. So the, 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 the plan to start with or to look at Manresa Island certainly seems to be something that, that has a lot of opportunities. But we also need to see what, what's needed to prepare the site. Uh, the old uh, terminal for the oil barges, um, whether that needs to be dredged, and if it does, where will they put the dredge material? Uh, might they need to put that on the uplands since New York State isn't giving approval to place any dredge material in, in Long Island Sound. And if they put it on the upland, you know that there, there's a remediation uh, pilot project that's been ongoing there for, for a couple of years, uh, trying to figure out what to do with, with the remediation of the old fly ash pile. The, 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 the pilot project was to, in, to involve planting wetland vegetation. So there's a whole bunch of things to think about here, including how does this affect their their uh, already submitted permit application. Uh, do they do they have to uh, just amend an existing application, or do they have to prepare a new one? I'm assuming that they would amend the, uh, the existing application. And then, how does this relate to the environmental impact evaluation that they had to do, which didn't include uh, use of Manresa Island? So there's a whole lot of interesting things to to think about, but but it, it has a positive uh, potential, real real positive uh, impacts. And the other, the other communications that we've had with DEEP, and this isn't, this isn't really a water quality matter, has to do with the public safety of the continued operation of the two passenger boats between the bridges. So we've had several remote meetings with, I guess two, with DOT and, and, and uh, its consultants concer concerning the, the continued operation and what the risk is involved of operating the two passenger boats dur during the uh, during the uh, construction uh, period, which could go on for five years. So right and right now, um, we're waiting to hear back from them, and and they they plan to do a uh, what do you want to call it a field test or to operate the boats and uh, and see how what, how 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 the maneuverability is in the area that would be would be uh, remain free without obstructions. So those are two things and. We've heard nothing from Eversource. Um, uh, we talked with the Corps of Engineers yesterday, and they, they received no uh, applications from Eversource. We did hear from DOT at one of those meetings concerning the, uh, the passenger boats that we should expect that Eversource will submit their applications to the Siting Council within the next two months. So that's, that's well, so all, we, we just have to, Keep keep uh, alert and um, and keep doing the best we can to review the, the projects. Uh, Seems like everything's pretty much up in the air. Yeah, but don't they have don't they have to 
submit all the other stuff before they go to siding council? No, I think that, that, that you would think uh, that they, that, that our, our argument at the beginning was they should go to the siting council first to get approval as to whether they can do this before they, uh, because the siting council has the ultimate uh, authority before going to DEEP. And, and okay. we were told in response that they intended to do this as best they could in a, in a parallel or simultaneous way. But our argument at the beginning was they should get siting council approval first, because theoretically the siting council could say, we're not going to approve this. So then what's then, then they'd have to, uh, they'd have to adjust what they're submitting to DEEP. Right. So it's, yeah, it's interesting, Pete. Um, but yeah, what, what they do with the, it, with dredge material and, and whether they have to place that on Manresa Island and, and uh, it's all, all very, very interesting. Um, so we'll, we'll see how it goes. Now, Pete, I think 80% of it is fly ash already. Of, of the island or the dredge material? The island. 50 acres of fly ash. If you go, well, if you're, if you're coming down the road, going towards the plant, when you come in, that whole left side was a big moat when I was there, and that's where they dumped the fly ash. That's why birch trees like it. Joe, um, Jim's uh, audio is not working, and so he's listening through my phone, and he just wanted to point out that there is a man race uh, association, I think most of us know that, that, um, you know, will want to have a voice in this. Oh, yeah. Well, Louise, it's very interesting. If you go back and look at the history of what happened when Northeast Utilities proposed to build a power plant there in the first place, <laughs> it's, a, it's a very, very interesting history um, uh, that the Village Creek Association and also the Wilson Point property owners, they opposed it. And uh, they, they had attorneys and, and uh, the, the zoning <coughs> commission in Norwalk uh, approved it. Um, well, I'm getting off track. Uh, and then, then there, there was a referendum and, the, and this, uh, the, the, for actually city purchase of that property, and that, that was defeated. But the, the history of the conflict when that was first proposed as a power plant is, is, is very interesting to go back and look at. Um, but anyway, I don't, I don't know that what they're proposing now is, is – is, uh, well, well, we'll see. We have to, we have to hear it. Pete, and, Peter, okay. I have I have a question, uh, and Pete, you, you might know the answer to this. Have they had real heavy equipment go out on that asphalt road going out to the plant? Uh, well, yeah, they had, uh, years ago, they used it for um, when they were putting the cable in and stuff. Okay. They're, they had tractor trailers that were, oh, they had like a 26-wheel thing go down to bring the cable because they buried it in a section, a, a piece that they were saving to reuse. Yeah. So that could, that that can carry the, the, the load, but I don't think they're going to be using that much on, on roadway anyways. Oh, well, that's good. Yeah. I think they'll bring most of that by, by water. Yep. Yeah. It'd be cheaper for them to bring it by water than it would to have trucks stealing it and stuff. Yes. Yeah, but if, if they're doing fabrication on the land itself, you don't know what they're getting deliveries of and whether they're going to come by a boat or, or a truck. Well, they'll right. probably bring a crane in. You know, yep. they're going to need that. But I'd say it's a minimal as far as road stuff goes. I'm okay. sure that's going to be part of their presentation on the 16th. Correct, yeah. yeah, yeah. Just, just because that's how they're going to rate this and whether it's going to be major opposition against it, it's going to be based on traffic. Because if there's no traffic, there's no harm, or as long as they work within reasonable hours as far as noise is concerned. It's the traffic Chris, that could be a big issue there. Chris, did you hear anything? Chris? You're muted. Chris, you're muted. Yeah, yeah, no, I have not heard anything about this at all. I'm, I'm not involved with the permitting site, so uh, it's probably Mike Brzezinski again, but I. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. J J Joe, at the, I don't mean to keep blabbering on here, but there's one other thing having to do with the bridge that is uh, of interest to the Water Quality Committee, 
and that's how we, we handle um, turbidity restrictions that would be put into the into the permit. So um, the Harbor Commission and and our, our water quality expert who did the work for us on the I-95 review and the watershed stuff, he, he's gone through the DOT's turbidity data, uh, but not all, not all of the 10,000 points or whatever they whatever they have, but a, a sample of them, and has has come come up with with an analysis based on the the sample he did, which doesn't show, and, and we talked about this, Joe. So so we're we're, we're doesn't show real high spikes um, due to natural uh, variability, uh, but we need to review <clears throat> that data. That, that we've analyzed and what the implications are for the permit with Mr. Grzywinski and, and Mr. Gagne from DEEP. So we're trying to set up that sort of remote meeting now. And, and Joe, we hope that you, you might be able to participate as well. I, I would that, like to be there. That, 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 that won't be a public meeting. That will just be to hear the consultant's report on, on, on what he's done and then to figure out whether we should continue to analyze the uh, the, the turbidity data, uh, but but I think that's something that we spend a well, a lot of time trying to come up with with recommendations that will will help protect water quality in the harbor from from turbidity that may be released during during the bridge project. <clears throat> Jeff, excuse me one second, but I was at the at the police dock today, and the test unit is gone there. Well, <laughs> good Everyone thing we did the good thing we did the analysis when we did. Then <laughs> I thought it was supposed to be for a year, so yeah. we get summer, winter, <laughs> fall, spring. Yep. It wasn't well, even there a year. Well, that's that's part of the discussion, then, Pete. Uh, we'll we'll try to get this meeting together as quickly as we can. And and Brian from the I guess Dr. Pinto has talked with Brian at the city hall to help set up the. The the the, the uh, remote meeting with with deep, uh, so we'll may, hope, hopefully at the next water quality committee meeting we'll be able to report on on uh, on that. Um, well, I, I I think you guys are going to get tired of hearing me say it, but they they did their turbidity measuring incorrectly, and they should have had it attached to the dock, so that they're getting the top meter and then one on the bottom. And if they really wanted an elegant study, put one somewhere in the middle. But having a stationary turbidity meter that is impacted not only by the vertical migration of the, the plankton, but also by the tides, which have an impact on the plankton. Um, it's too many variables that would fall into the equation of how to study it instead of having that one upper turbidity meter, which would make a, a world of difference for, the, for them. But we'll hopefully discuss that with them when the time yeah. arises. <clears throat> okay, next. Um, Chris, is there anything you need us to know from DEEP? Uh, no, I don't think I ha have anything new to report, no. Okay, good. Old business. Um, so there was one thing, I mean, this is not so pertinent to everybody, but for um, the Norfolk River Watershed Association, we did hear back from DEEP. We got on the, um, we've asked for a public hearing on the first taxing district's plan to raise the dam, um, the group's reservoir dam on the Silver Mine River. And we got a, a sort of a pre-pre-hearing meeting date of July 22nd. So I can update you guys at the next meeting, but um, we did hear back and we do have that day at 1 p.m. on the 22nd. Excellent, thank you. Yeah, I did mention the last time it, that there was a public uh, notice of, I mean, a permit application up for public comment um, for a diversion to the Southwest Regional Pipeline. I mentioned that the last time. I don't know what the status of the, that is as far as comments double it's it's under review at the we haven't we have not published an intent to approve or anything like that yet wait chris sorry um i missed the last meeting what what it where is the diversion happening is it in our watershed yes it is it is basically a diversion of waters by aquarian to their um 
Southwest Regional Pipeline, which the connection yeah. is in the Silver Mine area. It will serve water from basically the Fairfield Mill River system over to the system that serves Greenwich and Stanford. They are okay. proposing to open up a new uh, well field in the Housatonic area to be able to pump water up to that Mill River system to kind of balance it, but there's not a lot of details in the application about that. Okay, so it's it would bring water through our watershed, but it wouldn't be it wouldn't be taking water from our watershed, right? Not according to the application. Yeah. Okay. Chris, do you, do you could you send a copy of that application to, no. to me by any chance? What? I, I cannot send a copy of it. You have to get it from Aquarian. Okay. <clears throat> but right. just, just, and the reason I bring it up, and th I'm thinking about the, the Mill River uh, group, in, <clears throat> excuse me, in Fairfield. So this is, this is a, a pending proposal by Aquarian to, to divert water from the Mill River watershed uh, w uh, westward. Is that right. the way to describe that? Okay, thank you. Yeah. Um, the first selectman in Fairfield received a copy okay. of the application. Okay. But there are some questions about what I can send out because the water company may have to redact certain segments. I see. That, 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 I'm sorry to, sorry to detract from the Norwalk meeting. I'll follow up on that. Well, it's 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 relevant. All the systems are interconnected. Yeah. So, Thanks. In times of emergencies, things change very quickly. Okay. Uh, next thing: testing for COVID nineteen by Department of Agriculture. Um, I, I communicated with uh, Kristen Derosa Bannock last week, and she said they will not be testing shellfish at all. And the reason for that uh, is very simply they, the experts are telling them it's a respiratory illness. It does not affect the digestive system. There appears to be no evidence that you can get the disease by eating anything and therefore it's not worth the test. So that's where we are on that. And Tom, I don't know if you know any more than I do about that but that's the extent of what has been passed on to me. No, Joe, I haven't heard anything about that. Okay. So they will not be doing any testing for it. Now, ironically, I don't know if, if the shellfish could pick up the COVID-19 that the guys on board the deck could get the disease just from inhaling the spray that might be coming off of the shellfish. Um, that's, that's another question I can fire out at her that hit me in the middle of last night. So we'll, we'll see where that goes. What's the likelihood of that, Joe? I mean, that sounds like it's pretty alarmist. I don't think. Have you ever, you, have you ever been on a boat when they've been harvesting oysters? Yeah, but okay. The spray and I know like the piss clams in the sand, the spray, but realistically, are they really I don't know. Ingesting it? They're you know, not I ingesting they, it. But they, they, have a new, they, they have a new phenomenon now that they can test the community by the discharge of their sewage plant. That's what we're doing next. Okay. So that I get. And but, but the parts per million, by the time you're in the water and it's already been treated, I, I, I don't know. I mean, I, have we heard of any breakouts any, anywhere else? No, not yet. The other thing is, does it live in salt water? Yeah. It Correct. lives in salt water? It, well, it, uh -huh. it, it, we don't know how long it stays viable in salt water. Um, on dry <laughs> land, it stays viable for 48 to 72 hours. Most studies have found, but that doesn't mean it can't last longer. That's and, old information, Joe. Now they're saying that you don't worry about wiping a table after somebody gets up out of it because it's the likelihood of it being on the table is non-existent now, especially if you got outdoor stuff. And this is outdoors too, the 
the I, talk, I talk to Kristen and they're going right ahead with their water quality testing. There's no alarm on that part at all. Correct. Correct. So that's that's where we are. So I wanted you guys to know whether there was testing for this or not, and you have the answer. There's more of a chance of getting sick with the shellfish sitting in the refrigerator too long rather than people eating them because they need to get them out there and stimulate their businesses. No, no question. No question. Yeah. And, and when Jonas Salk was around or Saban was around, he found that the polio virus was killed by the stomach acid. It could be the same here. We don't know. But that's, that's the whole thing with this, with this virus. We, there's so much we don't know. And um, the sewage test, was, which is part of the, the next new business thing, um, I, I sent around the article that was in the hour. There are several locations that have done testing of sewage as a predictor for COVID-19 in a community. Um, because it could pop up, they're theorizing, and set off an alarm as to how many people could potentially have it within a community before people start to become symptomatic. So the big question is, uh, how accurate are these tests, which we're not sure, and how much of a real indicator this can be, and then how much health departments are going to put stock in this and make predictions and decisions off of this. Um, and that's why I included the, um, the article with the email I sent you, sent you all so that you'd get an idea of uh, what the, the reporter was able to get out of it. But there's also been a study in Massachusetts too. They should be testing the air within three or four feet off of Madison Avenue in Manhattan <laughs> with all the anarchists running down the street shoulder to shoulder. That's, there's more of a likelihood. There's a lot of forces going on. Garcetti in, in LA, he's got the whole city locked down and yet he's marching without a mask shoulder to shoulder with all the people that are there. Yep. It's, uh, it's all craziness. And, and you know, they're the ones that were supposed to be setting the example. What, and, and it's all hypocrisy. I mean- well, hopefully, John, this austere group, an intelligent group can make better decisions than what they're making. That's what we're hoping for. Um, and facts relating to the COVID-19 and wastewater treatment process and discharge, um, to Long Island Sound and Rivers is something that we'll see more of. And Steve, you're getting into the testing of this, right? Yes, sir, I am. And what can you share with us? Um, or is it proprietary? Um, well, I mean, the test that I'm involved with isn't uh, proprietary other than its design. But I mean, the data that I know from this uh, study uh, one that was based on uh, quantitative PCR showed essentially two things. One, that the um, onset of the infection was earlier than anticipated, earlier than the your clinical. People. Pete, Pete, yeah. please mute. I don't care. Mine is too. So uh, that the infection was earlier than anticipated and uh, very interestingly, that the infection rate based on this uh, wastewater data seems much higher than um, the cumulative clinical data that we have. So uh, that could be bad news in one way, and it could be good news in terms of uh, herd immunity. This is analyzing the sludge. It's not into the stream of waste itself. It's a sludge, correct? Yeah, so, right. So the chlorine, uh, will kill the coronavirus. So even with a bichlorinated bypass, that should be effective. Um, so uh, there was just a discussion a couple of minutes ago about spray. Uh, there is a warning about spray from force mains, such that one could aerosolize uh, wastewater um, upstream of the sewage treatment plant and inhale it and become infected.
So you're saying in the sewer pipes, if like a sewer pipe let go and... And, it, and if that material was aerosolized, it's possible that one could be infected by the droplets from a force main, yes. Oh, okay. Well, that's the people that work in the sewer plant though, sewer people. Yeah, or everyone that drives through the puddles as uh, the one they had in Darien. Oh, uh, yeah. Here <laughs> on the post road. <coughs> they were pumping that out. <laughs> uh, Joe uh, and Steve, um, because we just recently hired our fancy new wastewater treatment plant company, Suez, I wondered, uh, I think it might be worth our while to check with them and see what their uh, discussion is about this, too. That might be a great source. I don't know if Tom Kloster, if you have done that. No, no communication with them as of yet. Now, have they walked in and completely changed personnel or are the personnel still in place? It's under change now. It is? Yes. Okay. Let me see if I can reach out to them and have a communication with them. At Ask some to point. speak to Fred Trefison. He's in charge of public relations. Talk Fred's with him. Back? He's back. Excellent. Got a very good job there. Excellent. Uh, do you happen to have his contact information by any chance, Dick? I do have it. I'll give it to you tomorrow. Okay. Please send it to me. Thanks. Um, any other comments or questions about the COVID-19 in wastewater? Okay, Diane, you had something you wanted us to talk about. I didn't put it on the agenda, but we've got time. I do not, for this meeting, the main thing I was focusing on was the COVID in the wastewater. And John Pinto sent uh, some of us very interesting discussion, maybe um, that we you may want to share with our Water Quality Committee after the meeting because of his background, he was asking a lot of questions about the efficacy of the testing method. And uh, I'm, I'm going to follow up with Steve Bartish because I'm glad to see that there is a review of this very technical. I'd like to understand more about it. Um, so I don't have anything else right now. What were okay. you thinking? Uh, well, you had you had sent an article to some of us and said we'd like to discuss it. So I was just tossing it out there for a possibility for discussion, and we can easily table it. Um, it's it's not a problem at this point, and I think as Steve learns more and the rest of us learn more, you, you know, I had a long talk with my family doctor today. Um, they know so little about this virus, it's almost scary. Mm -hmm. And the, the irony is, I asked them a very simple question. I said, why do some people in a family get the virus? And why do other people in the family sharing the same space not get it? You know, if it's truly highly contagious. And his one word answer was genetics. But he did not know what genetics. Is something some people have that just make them resistant and other people more susceptible. And that's something hopefully medicine will, will learn over the next six months or a year. Yeah, but we're creating more problems now because we're washing our hands 10 times a day, eliminating all the bacteria that helps your immune system. And we're, we're being over cautious rather than letting that hurt effect take place. Kids we know, and it's been proven already, have a super duper hyperactive immunity to this disease, it's, it's with people with underlying. And it doesn't matter, age is one of the characteristics, but people that are of age with good health are faring extremely well as, as well. You know, they're, they're just, this whole thing is <coughs> morphing and testing. They, they, they really don't have a, a regimen down. They're finding out now that people on respirators have an 80% mortality rate and you're better off without a respirator and be treated elsewhere otherwise. So we've been so, sold a whole bill, big bag of garbage. You know, it's it, flus and viruses have been around for centuries, hundreds and millions of years. Let it rip. I'm just well, they, also, 
They also I'm, said I'm, the, I'm the age. I'm diabetic, and I have four stints in my heart. Let it rip. Yeah, but they're saying people that smoke have a higher resistance to this too. Correct. Absolutely. <laughs> the smoke. I don't has understand why, but that's what they're saying. Because you, because the virus can't take hold of your lungs because it's so full of crud. From the smoke, <laughs> There's a, it's a That's, resistance barrier. It's like right. having a force. It's like having a force field. I'm just going to get a shot of Clorox. Let it go. That's the yeah. first time I've ever heard of smoking as uh, being so beneficial. <laughs> and and Dick, your point is well taken. So um, the trade publications in wastewater treatment have noted a decrease in the um, microbiota. Um, within wastewater treatment plants just because people are cleaning uh, with these products and they're going into the waste stream and they're decreasing the efficiency of the plants. To that point, I run two studies on Norwalk Harbor for bacteria the last couple of weeks and it's unbelievably low. I've never seen it like this. My highest count was 41 one day and 130 the next. Interesting. Well, that, that, that is interesting, Dick. Did, is is that can we make some sort of relationship between that and uh, less cars on the road, or 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 anything to do with with less activity because of the 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 virus shutdowns? Our big test will come when we get a really heavy rain. We'll see what happens then. But right now, all the harbors are showing, and I'm doing five of them, six of them. All of them are showing really low numbers. Well, I, I'm wondering if there is a, is a connection with less, less uh, activity, just like there's less greenhouse gas emissions. Um, is it possible that there can be less? Well, anyway, that, that, of course, that depends on, on the source, the source of, of the bacteria to start with. Um, it, right. wouldn't affect, it, would, it wouldn't affect wildlife sources. It would, it would have to be a... Man. Well, anyway, that, that's very interesting. I haven't read anything about that uh, in any publications less pollution because of of the of the extended cloud social set uh, shutdowns <laughs> huh. all right well um moving on any questions or comments at this point before we go to minutes from last time yeah, I, I just have an aside comment, Joe. You know, I've been watching the, the uh, crab situation with the mitten crabs. Yep. This week, I was handed three more from the Housatonic. And it's just, no one's paying any attention. <laughs> Those are bad news. Um, is Deep paying attention to that, Chris? I mean, is there a plan about that? Not that I know of. I've tried to call the Fisheries Bureau, and I don't, I don't even get a return call from them. So, and I've also handed it over to the Norwalk Hour, who tells me that they're going to run a they're going to run a spread on it, but they're all bound up with the coronavirus, and they and they say they don't have the space. So there you go. The three in one day is pretty significant. Yes, it is. Yeah. Chris, is there anything at deep about this? It is not something that I am involved with or I have heard anything about, but. Uh... You know, Dick has contacted, did he contact somebody in, in an old line, Dick, or in the fisheries there? I have tried to get fisheries, but I can't uh, get a return phone call, so I'll keep after them. Are they okay. in, Chris? Yeah, I can look. Are they what? Uh, well, everybody would be working from home, so email would be the best way to contact people. Actually, right. fisheries division has different policies, so. So some of the fisheries staff are actually doing field work. So, but still email is the best way to contact anybody from the phone calls are not as reliable at this point. I was just also gonna say, Joe, that the um, DEEP's integrated uh, water quality report is out and comments are due, um, I think in like two weeks. I don't know if this group would have any, I looked over them, it, it sort of looks like last year's um I just, I just got a copy. what's that i just got a copy of that yeah it's always a reminder of you know what we need to work on 
<laughs> and um, but one thing I thought was interesting in it um, was that the Silvermine River looked like it was marked as a high priority for doing temperature testing, which hasn't been done. So I was going to comment that um, you know that would be that we would be happy for that to happen through the um, volunteer water quality monitor, water quality monitoring program. That that it desperately needs it and has needed it for years. Yeah, and they seem to have it on their radar, so that's good. good. Did you see that, Chris, that the Silvermine River has a blue dotted line on the integrated water quality report that mean, that I thought meant it's targeted for um, temperature testing in that treasure hunt of um, that the volunteer water quality monitors did? I'll send it to you. Oh, you're, you're still muted. You're muted, Chris. <laughs> the, vol the volunteers are not working this year, this season. Oh. They may resume in the fall. But, oh. Uh, haven't a ever had a chance to review the, the integrated report, so I can get comments back to you, but I, I don't know right now. Okay. Okay, anything else? Okay, I sent you copies of the minutes from the last meeting. Are there any corrections or comments anybody would like to make? I just wanted to uh, ask for a clarification of my uh, brief presentation about asking for support for the health department. It was um, the way I remember it in my notes, it was pertinent to assisting in spot sampling for, for, for known pollutants. It wasn't for the daily monitoring that water companies have to do. So for instance, in the first taxing district, there are at least two compounds that we know of that have gotten into the well field through man-made situations. The first being trichloroethylene back in uh, when Alinco was in business and that source has been stopped. However, there is some material still in the groundwater and of course they have the charcoal filter. So in theory, there is no TCE still in the well field water. But recently, as we know, PFAS have been found in at least two of the wells in higher levels or in, in levels approaching what is of concern before EPA sets a standard. So I had, the reason I brought this up was not to question their regular testing, but to act kind of like, um, you know, trust but verify through occasional spot uh, surprise testing in areas relating to pollutants um, because of the fact that the health department is in charge of overseeing the water utilities to some degree. It's, and that, so I, I could send, I know. So what, Diane, Yeah. make it short. Will, How would you like that to change? That in that uh, first or second sentence, just say that, uh, that I wanted a spot surprise testing support for known contaminants of the public drinking water supplies. Tom, you got that? Yep. Something to that effect. Okay. Thank you. Anything else with the old minutes? No? All those in favor of accepting the old minutes with the change that Diane expressed, raise your hand. Okay. Any opposed? Okay. So it carries. Uh, next meeting should be July second. Second. Yep. And hopefully we'll have everybody, everybody Zoom connection all set and ready to go. Motion to adjourn. I make a motion. Second. Okay, we are out of here. Thank you all. Bye. Thank Stay you. Safe. Bye, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Stay well. Uh, I guess our next meeting is at 7.15 for the Shellfish Commission. Yeah, Bye. we'll see you at 7.15.
Okay. Okay. Bye. Thank you all.